small groan above me reminds me that Lily retired to rest on her bed for a bit a few minutes ago. Almost completely drained of energy, I managed to stand up and drag myself to the side of the bed, sitting down and leaning back against it. Woo! A lot of teeth to here. Good gosh! Ugh! Lily's groan sounds lifeless. Too much to drink? My head hurts. Yeah, too much to drink. I rest my head back and idly stare at the ceiling. What an unmitigated disaster. Like proper idiots, we all drank the night away with one glass after another. Hanako simply fell to the side of sleep, and it's a miracle I don't feel as ill as Lily. Hey, Hisao, I'm sorry about today. I didn't think this would happen. It's fine, Lily. Uh, to tell the truth, I had a lot of fun today. Really? Mm-hmm. I think Hanako did, too. No, no, she certainly did. There's a short silence before another groan resounds from the supine Lily. You okay? As you said, I drink, just drink too much. What's the time? The time? Uh, it's... I quickly look at my wristwatch. It's numerals, numerals barely legible in the gloom. I can't speak. See, I'm drunk too! About midnight. Curfew's in effect, then. Yeah, I guessed as much. We'll have to all sleep here for tonight. Woohoo! Mmm, some trouble going on in this here. This, uh, birthday party. As soon as I hear it, I hear the sheets moving as Lily starts to sit up. Hanako. Ah, uh, no, go back to sleep. Don't try to get up. Iso, I have to. You're in worse shape than me by any stretch. Get some rest. But what about... I'll grab some spare blankets and put them over her. Don't worry. As I give a deep yawn and start to retrieve them, I hear her lie back down with a soft thud. Thank you, Hiso. No problem. It's the least I can do. You look outright wasted. <laughs> I'm not wasted. Just a little bit tired. Don't lie. You're wasted. You're gone. She starts pouting, a slight slur beginning to distort her words as alcohol takes a hold of her again. I grab a couple of blankets rolled up at the end of her bed. Quietly walking over to Hanako, I carefully lay the blankets over her peacefully sleeping figure, making sure not to wake her up. The thick smell of alcohol coming off her breath makes me doubt she'd wake up no matter what I did, though. I stand and take one last measure of the room. Two girls, both very drunk, and one guy sleeping overnight with them in the female student's dorms. What a scandal that'd be if it broke out. As I move to sit back down at the side of the bed, I steal one last glance at Lily. Her sprawling, disheveled figure lies resting peacefully, slightly turned to the side. I crouch down to get a better look. Her white skin blends in with the white pillow of the bed, a look of slumber-born peacefulness on her face. Usually she seems so confident and forward, always there and caring for Hanako. Now, though, she seems painfully delicate. I think back to Hanako's presence. I thought it'd be a nice occasion for her, but I'd hardly expected it to be so moving. One birthday after another, year after year. Just she and Lily all alone. I guess it just wasn't just the presence she liked. Resigning myself to an uncomfortable sleep, I sit down at the side of the bed once again and rest my tired arms beside me. Hey, he Sal. Lily's voice is so quiet I can barely hear it. She must be on the verge of sleep. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you for what? For being here. That's okay. So here, deep breath. It's obviously obvious Lily's gone to sleep. After closing my eyes, it doesn't take long for slumber to take me as well. Is that it? Hisao? Hisao, are you? The soft, barely audible voice lingering in my ears slowly wakes me. I wish I could be awakened like this more often. With a mumble, I slowly open my... Whoa! <laughs> Taken by surprise at the face hovering curiously over just mere millimeters from mine, I make our heads collide with the harsh that- Oh my god! <laughs> For a blind person, that must be extremely shocking and terrifying. The impact of her foreheads causes both of us to fall backwards and yelp in pain. Lily sounding more like a squeak toy than a person. Ow, ow, ow! I slowly rub my forehead, supporting myself with the other. With one hand, sorry. Lily lies a few feet ahead, doing just the same, her face obviously pained. Ah, uh, sorry, your face was kind of close and I acted on reflex. Are you okay? My head. My head. The hangover is worse. I hate you, Hiso. Get out of my room. It seems she's not actually okay. Come to think, but I doubt that the impact alone is what's causing her head so much pain. Hangover? You drank a fair bit last night. 
She's sounding the nods in confirmation as I lever myself up. There's a lot of use of the word lever. Wow, that is a very short uh, pajama top. <laughs> I offer a hand to her and help her back onto her feet. Glancing behind her, I find that Hanako is still fast asleep, totally oblivious to what's going on. It's not fair. I only drank as much as you did. That's very, very different from what I remember. And anyway, girls have a lower tolerance than men. That doesn't help. Fine, I'll get you a glass of water. Just be careful not to trip over Hanako. I rub the sleep out of my eyes, or at least some of it. <clears throat> As I walk to the counter, tending to someone with the hangover isn't the way I'd like to spend a morning. It only takes a few seconds for the glass to fill, the clear water reflecting the silver of light that makes it through the thin curtains. It looks like Lily's taken a seat on this side of the bed. I walk over to her while taking care to step over the peacefully sleeping Hanako and place the glass into her outstretched hands. Thank you. No problem. I take a seat next to her in the soft bed, having a surprising amount of give. She drinks slowly, methodically. A long silence passes with only Hanako's soft breathing to be heard. Snoring, more likely. With some measure of guilt, I look at Lily's face and attempt to read her expression. Her brow is furrowed, and she looks to be lost in thought. For a moment, I hesitate, but eventually place a hand on her shoulder and attempt to reassure her. I didn't expect her to flinch rather noticeably at that, though. Ah, sorry, I didn't mean to. Lily quickly shakes her head in a manner somewhat more violent than usual for her. She takes a long breath to steady herself before letting her head sink. I must look terrible right now. I move to protest, but quickly realize that it would be futile to do so. That said, I want her to open up more. If you want to talk about anything, I'm here. This could go dangerous places. Lily gives a self-deprecating snort as if to mock her own emotions. There's just... A lot happening right now. I'm sorry for being so strange recently, especially back when we were in town. Even now I'm a bit confused about everything. Believe me, I know how that feels. She smiles wistfully, resting a cheek on the backs of her fingers. We're a couple of broken young fools, aren't we? Where does that come from? Come on, don't say that. Come graduation, we'll be back out into the real wo world. The real world? Sometimes I surprise myself with the way I think about things. I guess the strange divorced feeling of Yamaku and the surrounding town compared to the outside world still hasn't become natural. Maybe it never will. It's strange. In hindsight, being isolated from society like this doesn't feel as bad as it probably should. A wry grin on her face, Lily seems to share the same sense of amusement at the idea. Eventually, though, her smile drops. I'll be going back to Scotland for a week or two soon. Hmm, is this what Akira had to talk to her about? Is that why we had to reschedule Hanako's birthday party? She gives an affirmative nod. You'll be able to see your family again, at least. You're not looking forward to it? I haven't met my family in six years. I don't even know how to act around them anymore. Wait, what? My mouth hangs open as I try to process what she said. If she's 18, then that means she's been only... She's... Have, she'd have been only 12 when they left. I may have seen very little of my parents, what with them both working long hours, but that's... I feel utterly useless as I struggle to find some way to respond. That's... but why? Why did they leave, or why are they inviting Akira and me back? Both, I suppose. My father's business has its headquarters in Scotland, and an executive position became available for him there. In the end, he had to move permanently. My mother followed him, but Akira and I stayed in Japan for the sake of both Akira's job within the Japanese branch of my father's company and my education. As for the latter, one of my aunts is gravely sick. Ah, I'm sorry. Don't be. It feels strange, really. We're being summoned there for her, yet we've barely met before. I can't even remember the sound of her voice. Equally strange is the total lack of antipathy she feels toward her family for doing such a thing. I can't help feel feeling slightly humbled. That said, her wistful exterior is just hiding her emotions. Seeing her like this is depressing. Knowing what, I, what to do, I lift myself off the bed. Lily notices the bed's movements, her head perking up and her hand reaching sideways to feel where it was. You so? I walk over to my bag, still leaning against the wall, unbuckling the front flap and retrieving the opag bag from within. I take the small, plain box in my hands. Ah. Hold your hands out, Lily. She looks surprised for a moment, but eventually acquiesces. 
I'm amused by her look of curiosity when I place the music box into her open palms. Her delicate, typically delicate way of handling it makes it seem as if it were fragile enough to be, to break if breathed upon. She wordlessly brings it to the front of her face, her slender fingers filling out its contours and patterning. Eventually her fingers find the recessed line between the lid and the body of the box, and her thumb effortlessly pops open the lid. I take a seat on the bed next to her, watching her face silently and intently. She sits completely motionless as she listens to the diminutive, tiny melody, her mouth just slightly open. It takes a long while before she closes the lid with a small stab, snap, bringing the curtain down on the miniature performance playing in her hands. The smile on her face, gentle and wistful, shows that I made the right decision. Think of it as a going-away present for your trip to Scotland. I will. A restless shuffling can be heard from the floor in front of us, the sound having woken Han Hanako. She climbs out of the blankets I put over her, looking befuddled and wiping the sleep from her eyes. I see you're finally up. N what? Hanako looks around the room with her eyes only half open, her mind far from being as awake as her body. Her day state makes me and Lily chuckle. As Lily gets off the bed and tends to Hanako, I take one last look around the room. I guess I'd better get going then. There'll be questions if I am leaving, seen leaving the girls' dormitories in the morning. Goodbye, Hisao. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> Hanako's like, oh, you're here. What are you doing here, Hisao? <laughs> I stand and walk to the door, picking up my somewhat lighter bag along the way. After I leave the room and enter the hallway, though, I hear Lily's footsteps behind me. Hmm? What's wrong? Without a word, she strides up to me. I freeze as I feel her hand slide onto my cheek, seemingly every nerve taking in the feeling of her fingers and palm upon it. Immediately after, her face slowly moves next to mine. A light momentary touch of her lips brushes against my other cheek. For a moment, everything seems to stand still. I absentmindedly bring my fingers to my cheek as if to try and recapture that fleeting feeling. Lily! That's my thank you, he said. Thank you? For your present. Have a nice day in school. Dang! Was that the real first kiss? How long have they been dating so far at this point after the, the town and their time in the, the town up to now, you know? Like, it's been a while. And with that, she disappears behind her door and gently closes it. The muffled voices of her and Hanako audible through it as much as they were yesterday night. I think I'd be hard-pressed not to have a nice day after that. I walk away with a certain spring in my step. I think there were some people around that glanced at me emerging from the girls' dormitory building, but I find it difficult to care. Oh, that is the end of that episode. Good job, Hisao. You have made it to, what is it, first base? The kiss. Oh, gosh. The next one's going to be starting with uh, Misha. So we're going to save right here. And wow, that was Hanako's birthday. I got a little bit of rowdy there with the alcohol that Akira brought. Completely breaking the law. I'm breaking all the rules in Yamaku, but we had a good time, and uh, he still got a good nice kiss out of it. So I'd say all all's well's ended well, right? Nobody got hurt. Nobody got in trouble. That's a good party in my book. So with that, I think uh, their relationship has just taken a whole new level. I mean, it's not every day that you have your first kiss, and on that very same night, you sleep over, uh, I wouldn't say next to the girl, but in the same room as the girl that you like. So that is a huge leap and bound for Hisao and Lily, for sure. So again, still interested to see where that's going to go and what's going to happen. I mean, that uh, that trip that Lily's going to take for two weeks is going to be really hard on the relationship because then it's going to turn, I think, into a long-distance one. And that's hard on any relationship. I've had to do long-distance relationships before, and that that's really hard on both people. So we'll see how well this plays out with the two of them. So until the next video, see y'all later.